Transfigured on the mount, O Christ our God. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Be Transfigured, where we invite you to live a new life in Christ. We pray that this episode is a blessing to you and will inspire you to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ. We invite you to join us for worship or study at the St. Nicholas Greek Orthodox Cathedral in Tarpon Springs, Florida, where visitors are always welcome. We'll be back in a few moments to share some more information about our ministry. My brothers and sisters, today we are remembering a great saint of our church. We call him St. John of the Latter because he wrote a very important book that described the ladder to heaven, 30 chapters, 30 steps to go from the earth to the heaven. And St. John wrote on his first chapter that we have to be willing to renounce the world. We have to be willing to give up everything in life. Yesterday, somebody on Facebook was asking the question. They were asking, what chapter was talking about dreams? And my response was, I don't know. I'm still on chapter one. Because that's where we all live. We all live with our struggle to leave the world behind. Because we live here. This is where our body is. Our mind wants to be in heaven with God, but we find ourselves here on the earth. And so St. John tells us the only way for us to climb the ladder to heaven is that we must first renounce the world. We must first be willing to give it all up. Of course, he was not the first one to tell us this. Christ himself said, Whoever desires to come after me, we just heard it last week, whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. So this understanding that we have to somehow be willing to give up this life is the very foundation of our journey to heaven. I wrote in the bulletin today, why do we bother with all this fasting? I think that's what I put the title. People are always asking me why I make such a big deal about fasting. The answer is in this morning's gospel. A man brings his son to God. His son had a demon possession, was unable to be healed by anybody. He even brought him to the disciples and he could not heal him. And Christ said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. And then he healed the young man. And in private, the apostles said, Lord, why couldn't we heal him? And Christ said very simply, this kind can only go out through prayer and fasting. This kind, that war with the demons. We are at war, my brothers and sisters, with the demons. They don't want us to climb the ladder to heaven. They would be perfectly satisfied if we stayed here on the earth condemned for all eternity. They don't want us to climb up. And so they are constantly trying to get our attention away from God. They give us all sorts of excuses why not to come to church. We've all used them. I have company. I have this. I have work to do. I have paperwork to do for my business. All of them at the time seem totally reasonable. But this is the demons coming at us and trying to distract us from God. And as long as our mind is dwelling on the earth, we cannot put our attention on God. And this is why St. John tells us, we must first renounce the world. 
And the only way to do that, my brothers and sisters, is through prayer and fasting. And I don't mean pretend fasting. I mean allowing the life of the church. The church has been guided for 2,000 years by holy men and women, guided by the Holy Spirit. This life has been tried and tested, they would say, right? In the, um, on, the, on the commercials, you always see tested and advantaged. Our way of life has been tested by the saints. It works. If only we allow ourselves to be led by the church. And these days of fasting, especially in the Great Lent. By the way, there's over 200 days of fasting every year. It must be a pretty important thing in God's mind. Because it is how we realize that life is not about this world. It is when we embrace the gift of fasting that we can finally be free from the world. We can finally wake up in the morning <coughs> and not have to put all of the attention into ourselves. We can open the day with prayer. We can eat simple foods. That's what fasting is. Simple foods. Aplafayeta. No meat, no dairy, no fish. No lavi. Now I'm going to put a parenthesis here. If you take medicine, that requires you to have a certain diet. If you have low iron, Aslam, if you have bad iron and you have to have a lot of high uh, protein foods and you have to work on your blood, then you have to eat. Fasting is supposed to lead us to heaven, not to the hospital. And more and more people come to me because I talk about fasting all the time and they're filled with guilt. Father, I can't fast. I have to eat for my medicine. Then eat. But if you don't take medicine, if you don't have physical problems, then we get to fast for the other people. We get to offer ourselves as a gift for other people to free ourselves from the bondage of life on earth. Think about it for a moment. The church has a rhythm to it. There are days that we fast, there are days that we don't fast. There are days that we have services, there are days that we don't have services. If we allow ourselves the freedom to live the rhythm of the church, we are actually freeing ourselves. Instead, we spend more time chaining ourselves to the life. We chain ourselves to our jobs. We chain ourselves to our way of life, to our homes, to our things, our pramata. But Christ says these challenges we can only overcome through prayer and fasting. And then finally, I want to remind ourselves of one other part of this morning's gospel. The Father says to Christ, if you can help my son, and Jesus says to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. And the man says, I believe. Help me, however, help my unbelief. 
And in this sense, it says it so beautifully in the modern Greek, I want to just say it again. Pistevo kirie, voithise me omos, yati pisti mu den ina dinati. Que mis. Y pisti mas den ina dinati. Voithise mas o theos. Me prosevhi. Με νηστεία η πίστη μας θα είναι πιο δυνατή. I understand our faith is weak. We say to each other, I hear it all the time, we say it to God, we want to live a certain way of life. We believe in God. But we're just weak. We're not strong enough to do it. So as the Father in this morning's gospel, we ask God for help. Help us because our faith is weak. And through prayer and fasting, our faith will become strong. Strong enough to defeat the demons in our lives strong enough so we can make it up the ladder to heaven. But the first step, the protos kalupati inne, prepena antakalipsume ton cosmon. We must renounce the world. That is step one. Maybe this year, as a family, Maybe this year as a family, we can all together make it to step two. If we carry each other and lift each other up the ladder together, because God has given us to each other to help us, to hold us, and to guide us. Glory to God for all things. Be Transfigured is a production of Be Transfigured Ministries in cooperation with the St. Nicholas Greek Orthodox Cathedral in Tarpon Springs, Florida. We depend upon your generosity to maintain our ministry. You can make a safe online donation when you visit our website, liveanewlifeinchrist.org.